All right, so we got Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero, the final review, sorry, the final preview from IGN, baby. Let's go to the video. Shout out to IGN. Oh my God, look at that, look at that gorgeous man. The Dragon Ball Tenkaichi series is one that meant a lot to me as a teenager and Same, young adult, same. Which was about the peak of my obsession with Dragon Ball Z. Same. It's also one that I haven't really thought about or touched in the last 15 or so years. Same. Fast forward to the present and after about Yo, is me and this guy twins? Time with Dragon Ball or what? Sparking Zero, it felt like I was hit with a spirit bomb of nostalgia as I once again got back in there, chaining together rapid movement teleports. Yeah. Bouncing my foes like ping pong balls between multiple vanishing attacks. Yeah. And kicking them away with so much force that they destroy mountains. Yes, sir. It was like reuniting with a dear old friend. And yet, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero feels like much more than just a nostalgia play. It's packed with new mechanics, a brand new approach to story mode, and a host of other exciting features that I only got a taste of. But I'm excited. And everybody's here. I don't mean to pause it, but everybody's here. Everybody. Everybody and their mamas in this game. Let's go. Let's get right into it. to dig more into it once it comes out. Let's see what IGN's month. saying. Let's see what let's see what they're saying. Instant 10. This is gonna be a 10. 10 out of 10. I don't the care what you two say. Hours of my hands-on time was spent on free play. I used a large chunk of this time to re-familiarize myself with the Tenkaichi style of gameplay by hitting up Sparking Zero's exhaustive tutorial mode, which covers all the many, many different mechanics present here. There are vanishing assaults, vanishing attacks, yep. lightning attacks, nice not done yet. burst smashes, dragon smashes, yeah. high guards, low guards, high speed evasion counters, perception Bro, counters, oh my super God. counters, Z counters, and so on. It's a lot to take in. Man, this sure. game is going to be fun, bro. It all serves to enhance the depth of the combat and, most importantly, deliver on the power trip. Woo! The most powerful Look at the go! Throughout all of anime. That's the greatest. Sure, that's the greatest anime character ever, by the way. Away, go arc with your mom. Behind them, drill them Truly. Into the like, legit. And then pick them up, swing them around. Go argue with like your like mother! Well. There are other simpler ways to get just as much damage, if not more. But doing stuff like that feels so incredibly cool. And to me, that's what the Tenkaichi series is all about. Yes, sir. Once I was back up to speed on the combat and mechanics, I decided to check out one of Sparking Zero's big new modes outside of its story mode, Custom Battles. Custom. It lets you create, share, and play out your own fantasy Dragon Ball fight scenarios, complete with options to create an intro cutscene, a title card, mid-match triggers, and outro cutscenes that cover what Wait, happens what? when you win. I am more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And when you lose. You knew you would lose, yet you still defied me. Tough. There's look at bro, look at Maker That's the greatest like where anime villain ever. Your custom battle with other players, you need to be able to prove that it's possible by beating it yourself. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to craft my own battle to the degree that I would have wanted. Okay. So I opted instead to see what the mode was capable of by trying out some of the pre-made battles that were prepped by the developers. Okay. And to my delight, they were a lot of fun with a great variety of different types of fights. Oh my god. Some bro. were simply based around the idea of pitting certain oh, characters. Oh, she's getting bro, she's other, getting like beat. A battle of speed demons that had you controlling Birder. YouTube in the game. In the game YouTube in the game. In the game YouTube. YouTube in the game. Another had you as Kid Goku going up against Master Roshi to relive one of their training sessions. Yes, sir. And forcing you to win the fight specifically with whatever move Roshi calls out. My favorite, though, had me playing as a weak and underpowered Captain Ginyu against uh -oh. an appropriately overpowered Frieza. I mean, My only hope for victory bro, was using that's... Ginyu's ultimate technique, the oh. body change beam, yeah, the body to change. swap bodies with Frieza and then easily finish the fight. Easier said than done, as whenever I tried to power up to be able to use the move, Frieza would hit me with an instant kill yep. death beam. Yep, yep, sit down. What are you doing? Sit so down. I had to engage Frieza in combat just enough to be able to charge my meter, knock him away, and then use that time to charge up into sparking mode so that I could look there for an to land the attack. It was a surprisingly tense and refreshingly unique battle. And I love how the sky changes. Of the potential that I love that. Has as a sand Change to now! To come up with and share exciting fights that go far beyond the limits of Dragon Ball's canon. <laughs> Uh-oh, GG's. After the time for free play was up, I got a chance to check out a handful of episode battles, Yo. which collectively make up Sparking Zero story mode. Dragon Obviously. Ball's story has been told an ungodly number of times at this point, pretty much across all forms of media. True. But what makes Sparking Zero's interpretation especially cool is how it gives you multiple opportunities to do things differently than how they're supposed to go. 
Right from the start of Goku's episode battle, when Raditz takes Gohan away and Goku and Piccolo give chase, you actually don't have to join forces with Piccolo. Yeah. You're given the option to instead go it alone, and if you do that, but they still, you'll be joined they by still Krillin yeah. and fight Raditz in a battle with a completely different outcome. They still so give you people. You writhing agony like the worms you are. That's not all either. Even if you decide to play it by the cannon and team up with Piccolo, if you manage to defeat Raditz before Piccolo is able to charge his attack, you'll be met with a special, fully animated and voice sparking episode that plays out this what-if scenario of Goku surviving his encounter with Raditz, getting to train Gohan himself, and being there right when the Saiyans arrive on Earth. I didn't know that. Wait. I didn't know that. No, 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 I swear, bro. I swear on my life. I did not know that there was, I did not know that they made a scenario where, obviously it's, this, it's only in this game, but where if you defeat Raditz before Piccolo charges his stuff, Goku can just dodge it. And like, he can actually be a, a, a father. <laughs> Goku can actually be a father now. Goku. <laughs> because, listen, obviously, bro, Goku's an amazing father, bro. He's, bro, he saved his son and, like, their friends one billion times. Obviously, it's like, you know, it, it's it's the, it's the, um, the, the stupid people out there that's saying, oh, well, Goku was a horrible father. Yeah, he was dead. He was dead trying to protect his son. He was dead trying to get his son back. He had to kill his own brother. And his life was taken as well, trying to get his son. I, I, if that's a bad father, then I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know. Producer Jun Furutani told me that when selecting the battles that they wanted to highlight in episode mode, they wanted to focus on the battles that highlighted the playable characters the best in the story, but they also wanted to put a focus on battles that could potentially lead to branching outcomes. I followed up and asked Furutani about how substantial these branches could be, to which he replied, It's a really hard question to answer because depending on which branch we're talking about, it could skew in a very different direction. But oh. some branches might just go back to the actual canonical route again. Okay. For example, when sense. you fight Raditz, there's some smaller branches that have been there, but it takes you back to the canonical yeah, route. Yeah, it makes sense. And obviously after Raditz is Vegeta and after Vegeta is Frieza. Some of them are just blips. Yeah. Some of them kind of take you in a very drastically different direction. Oh wow! And while so basically what he's saying is that like, so basically what he's saying is that whenever you're like continuing along with these episodes and like you do try to do something different, yeah, some outcomes will work out differently, just like the one we just see now where Goku dodged the uh when he dodged the beam, but at the same time it's still gonna form into like the next. Uh, like, um, like it, it's gonna form into like the next boss, like how it should be. So obviously, like he said, um, it was Vegeta. Sorry, it was Raditz. And then after Raditz was Vegeta. And then after Vegeta, it's Freeze. It's still gonna go along in the in order. There are eight characters that make up Sparking Zero's episode. That, that's basically that what he said. They do seem to vary wildly in terms of length. Freeze! Thirty minutes of Goku's and only got through the Saiyan saga. Thirty minutes of Freeze's and only got to the final battle against Super Saiyan Goku. Uh oh. And then thirty to forty-five minutes of Future Trunks' story from Dragon Ball Super and pretty yes, much finished sir. it all up right there. Shit. Still, I'm very much looking forward to diving into all of these at launch. And you guys remember whenever uh, Frieza killed Krillin? That was crazy. Myself. He lifted it's them up like this. Too, that they're not easy to trigger. The fights themselves are already pretty tough, and to try and accomplish specific added challenges on top of that makes it seem like these are meant to be rewards for the most dedicated of players. Doubly so because you can't actually trigger these scenes if you lower the difficulty. <laughs> Really? I like Beyond that. The custom and episode battle modes, hey, if you play this game on easy, bro, I can't respect mode, it. Which allows you to participate in one of many different types of tournaments, each with different Ooh. rule sets. The Tournament of Power, for example, has you competing on the Tournament of Power stage with flight turned off and ring outs as an alternate win condition. Oh, good. oh just like Cell the rules in, in the actual anime, one right? One affair with no rules, but you only regain 20% of your life between fights. Oh. And the Yamcha games is straight up chaos with random rules and random character selection. You can also create your own tournament and customize your very own set of rules. Wait, as well. Yamcha games? And he can actually finally, pull up a battle? Encyclopedia mode, which I got to exclusively check out for a few minutes. Oh, hi, girl. 
it's a returning feature from Tenkaichi 3, but instead of just having Chi Chi giving commentary on a character, this time you get Chi Chi, Bulma, and Videl all gossiping about oh. the cast and giving their own little insights. I mean, what? I don't know. I kinda dig the silvery look. The little bits I got to listen to were all very amusing. <laughs> Like the girls commentating on how ugly Goku becomes when he transforms into a Super Saiyan 3 form. Uh, look how scary he is. True. Or how Garlic Jr. looks like a roided out Emperor Pilaf. <laughs> my relatively short time with Spider Man gotta be racist. my love for the Budokai Tenkaichi games and was a much needed reminder that arena <gasps> fighters can excite and thrill oh, just no, as much as traditional neck. 2D and 3D fighters can. Oh the my attention goodness. to detail here Talk is about some phenomenal. Yamcha games. The combat definitely has a learning curve, but is packed full of depth that is very satisfying to this learn. This is 10 out of 10, I don't care. And its story looks to provide a ton of flexibility in how it tells the tale of Dragon Ball. I'm still far superior to uh, you. Vegeta, I love you, but that's not true. Form turns out when Dragon Ball Sparking Zero releases next month on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. This is, this, and this is an instant 10, bro. Go argue with your mom. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, don't miss our exclusive Future Trunks episode gameplay, as well as our first preview from earlier in the summer. And for everything else in the world of video games, keep it here. At IGN. See you around. Bye, Goku. Skid you. All right, now um, he said a twenty. Bro, all right, I actually got the uh, the trunks footage. Um, I'm I'm just gonna uh, react to that. That's coming through. Um, it might not come directly after this video, but it's gonna come through uh, on the same day as this video. So, um, brother, I cannot wait till this game comes out. Comes out next month. I'm super excited about it. Uh, can't wait to actually like react to like some uh, like some of the, like the uh, content stuff like that. Uh, some of the uh, cool interactions that we're gonna be having as well. Ah oh, man, <laughs> nice man. I, listen, I'm excited. I haven't played this game in so long, man. Uh, too long, too long. I'm bro, too long. I haven't played this game in, in, in too long, bro. I'm still all I needed to say with the previous trailers, bro. This game is absolutely amazing. Looks ab, bro. This game, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. I remember having, uh, and I don't, I don't remember like which number, but I had the GameCube growing up. GameCube was like my first ever console. I love the GameCube. I, I will put the GameCube as like the number one console ever. Obviously, I'm biased. That's coming from a place of biasness, obviously. Is biasness a word? Eh, who cares? Well, listen, I had Dragon Ball. I had uh, NFL Street. I had three games. I had Sims, uh, Dragon Ball, uh, Budokai, and then I had uh, NFL Street. Bro, that Dragon Ball game, and I, I don't know if it was one or two on a GameCube. It blew me away. I was in, bro. What's so crazy was, bro, I'm going to keep it 1,000%. Bro, I, bro, this is how you know how, how much of an OG I am. I was on, bro, I was playing the Dragon Ball game before I even knew about the show. Yeah, I was like five or six years old playing the Dragon Ball game on the GameCube before I even knew it was a show. That's so crazy. I just literally now just remember that just now. I played the actual game before I actually watched the show, which is absolutely crazy. I'm, I'm going to check out that, uh, that Trunks gameplay. Uh, from IGN later today. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new right now on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Help me get there. And see you guys next time out.